slab rolled out, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take either your plastic rib or your metal rib, and we're gonna get rid of any canvas or marks that are in your slab. Uh, this is also a great time to check your slab um, for potential, potential air pockets that could be in the slab. And if you have any of those, then you would wanna pop those. And you can just use a needle tool or an X-Acto knife um, or even a pencil, but it's probably not gonna occur if you are using clay right out of an air compressed uh, sealed bag um, that's brand new. Air pockets are more common um, after you've wedged your clay um, and maybe you just didn't wedge it enough. But if you have them, you definitely want to make sure that they are gone because you don't want your form um, to explode. And those air pockets could uh, potentially be detrimental to your piece. So we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the same thing to the other side. I always preheat uh, my kiln for several hours for beginner student work and even sometimes for my own if I feel like I um, built just a little bit thicker than normal. Um, and when you do that, then the steam um, that is being released from the clay, it releases slowly and you have less of a chance of those air pockets causing an explosion. However, it's best if you wedge your clay properly and eliminate that whole scenario. Okay, so now that we have our slab compressed, I'm gonna take my 12 by seven inch stencil. So that's roughly, it could be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, depending on what you want, how big you want your form. Um, but for size purposes, um, that's what I'm gonna be building with. And I'm laid, I laid my ruler right up on the edge of that stencil. And I'm cutting my straight edge. And I'm using an X-Acto knife for this. Make sure that your fingers are out of the way. Do not have them in the path of your blade. And make sure that you're holding your ruler down so it doesn't move. The next step is to bevel my both my sides here because we're going to eventually pull, fold this so it's in the round. We're not going to fold it. We're going to um, manipulate it. So what we're going to do is if you're lucky enough to have a wire bevel cutting tool, um, they're fairly cheap. You can pick them up for like five bucks. But um, if you don't, for those of you that are maybe, you know, beginning potter or ceramic artist and you don't have that tool, what you can do is you just take your ruler and to get a beveled edge in clay, you measure the thickness of the clay. So this clay is about a quarter of an inch thick. So, and you know, the golden rule in measuring is to measure twice, cut once, right? I'm gonna go ahead and measure that one more time. He's talking and kind of forgot my measurement. Okay, so I'm just going to mark it here at the top. And then I'm going to mark it here at the bottom. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my ruler on my lines. And I'm going to have the tip of the blade at the corner of my slab. And I'm going to pull straight back. And I'm going to have the blade sitting on the ruler itself. The tip of the blade is always going to stay at this edge, this outer edge of the clay slab, 
while the blade itself is always sitting against the ruler. And it does take practice, so if you feel like, um, you know, you can take a piece of spare clay and you could try it on a piece of spare clay first. Um, if you're really coordinated, you can use two rulers and that will help your blade from slipping too far. Or if you have somebody near you and they're willing to help, they could hold this ruler for you as you make that cut. However, I've done this enough times that I can pretty much do it, um, you know, pretty quickly and fluidly. And sometimes I don't even use a ruler. So we're gonna do this to the other side as well, but you have to flip your slab. You don't wanna just come over here and do it here because then you'll have the same angle and we want opposite angles for whenever we put these two pieces together. So I'm going to flip my slab over and I'm going to make my measurement and then I'll make my cut. Now that I have my slab beveled, I'm ready to actually put the end of my piece together. At this point, you need your needle tool, your slip, and a modeling tool. So right now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna score and slip our edges right here. Um, so you can either lay it down and do this or you can stand it up, whatever is most comfortable for you. And you don't have to have a paintbrush for this. You can use your fingers. I like to go ahead and add my slip first and then score. But you can do it the opposite way too. If you score and then add your slip. I like to do it this way though because um, I feel like if I score first and then I add the slip, it's like counterproductive, I feel like sometimes. So that's why I do it this way. And try not to let your slab curl over on you because you don't want to warp it. Remember that clay has memory, and when you bend it or turn it, um, it remembers that. So now at this point, if you have access to a turntable, I would go ahead and use it. But I'm going to take my slab, and I'm going to really gently just start to curve it. So don't force it, just kind of gradually turn. I'm kind of using my thumbs and my fingers as a guide. Flip it over and do the same thing to the other side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up this edge right here with this edge. So it's kind of like the opposite. So it's going to form like this little tiny mini triangle. So I'm going to line that up. And all the while, you know, you're trying to keep this as round as possible. So what we're going to do at this point is we have where the clay is overlapping. So we lined up that corner and I'm just going to kind of push this so it's slightly underneath it. It's lined up on the inside. And now what we'll do is we'll pull this. We'll just kind of gently push this down and then we'll end up pulling it onto this part of the slab. So 
So here's my slab. Here's where it's connected. And I'm just going to gently trying to keep this section round so I'm always going to support from the inside. I'm going to kind of push this really gently. I'm not being really aggressive with my clay. And now I have this seam that I need to go ahead and I need to pull. So you can either use your fingertip and support from the inside and overlap your pull marks. Um, I usually tend to just use my fingertips or you can use a modeling tool. Supporting the inside, you're gonna pull the clay horizontally. Do not go up and down like this because we're trying to seal the seam up. You don't wanna end up with a crack. So we're pulling horizontal. Make sure that you overlap these um, pull marks and support from the inside. If you don't support from the inside, you're going to end up pushing your clay wall in um, and then it's going to warp it. my tool so I'm not holding it way down here at the end if you do it like that and you try to pull you have no control over this tool so use it just like you would a pencil as you pull those marks horizontally I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to seal the seam that's on the bottom going to be a little bit tricky to see in the camera but we have a seam on the inside and we need to do the same thing on the inside that we did on the outside so this time I'm going to support my clay wall on the outside and I'm going to pull on the inside and you have to kind of use your your wooden modeling tool as an extension of your fingertips and don't worry about going all the way down because you can flip your cylinder. Always supporting, going the direction of the seam. Okay, so now that at this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna rib this out. Again, either using your plastic rib or your metal scraper, whichever you prefer. I'm going to support the inside and I'm going to apply pressure compressing the clay pulling up. And then I'm also going to go the opposite direction I tend to very often go back and forth between the plastic and the metal ribs. It's just a personal preference. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. This gets a little bit more tricky, but it's the same process, you know, going vertical the best you can and going horizontal. Again, compressing that seam so we can't see it. So 
we've scored and slip our edge. Now what we're gonna do is we want this section, about an inch and a half of the edge of the slab to be angled in. So we're gonna take our rib tool and we're gonna flex it. So remember to flex your rib tool. You just don't want it to be nice and to be straight. You wanna flex. So it's sitting on my fingertips. I'm gonna press with my thumb and it's gonna curl back. So I'm pushing with my pointer finger and my pinky finger. And when I do this, I'm gonna really gently press inward. And this is helpful if you put this on your turntable because that way you can just turn the slab instead of having to pick it up and turn it. So I'm gently pushing the slab in, leaving the rounded corners. If you need to help it just a little bit, that's okay. And we're just going to do that several times. And each time, it should go further and further in. I'm just kind of using like this end part of my rib tool, not using this part. Trying to keep the slab the same thickness though. So now at this point, it should be about equally spaced all the way around. What we're gonna do is right behind this curved section right here, we're gonna really gently push that in. We're gonna gradually go down the seam and I'm gonna do that all the way around. Once you get back to where you started, again, right behind that rounded section, you're gonna push those two edges together and we're gonna pull a little bit over. And we're gonna continue to do that at each spot. And we're gonna do this over and over again until we have just a very slight opening in the middle. You won't be able to close this all the way up. You'll, you're only gonna do about an inch. And you're just pulling that clay over on top of itself. All of this clay should remain around the same thickness. You shouldn't have one that's really skinny and one that's really thick because if you're doing this gradually, working your way around the piece, you should have been able to keep it pretty consistent. Once you get to this point, you're gonna take your rib and we're gonna compress this clay. And we're gonna do that all the way around. Again, I like to go back and forth between my plastic rib and my metal rib. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my sponge and I'm gonna do just a little bit of smoothing so I can see if my seams are okay if I, or if I need to continue to compress. So now we're gonna make a little 
um, triangle for to seal the the bottom section of our tripod form. So I'm going to set this aside, and you probably you should have kept your extra clay, and we're going to cut out a triangular shape, just slightly larger than the triangle that's already on there. So it's almost like you're making like a little pyramid. Like so. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bevel these angles because I want it to sit down in there. So if you have a um, if you have a bevel wire cutter, fantastic, then go ahead and use that. If you don't, then you're going to use the same technique that we use when we cut the edge of the slab. If you need to use a ruler for this, feel free to do so. Watch your finger. So this is why we made it larger because obviously it's much smaller at this point. So once you have your triangle cut out, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna score and slip this area along with our edges. to very gently place this down into the hole and I'm going to use my modeling tool to pull this slab onto the foot. I'm not pressing down. Do not press down or you will collapse the foot. Gently pull from the middle of your triangle onto the foot. Do not push down with pressure, pull horizontally. And keep doing this until it's all the way smoothed in and then you will compress with your rib. Again, use whichever rib you're most comfortable with. Compressing where that seam is so you don't bust that seam as the clay dries. And then I'm going to go back in and I'm going to smooth this out and compress it with my sponge. And if you get some stubborn um, rib marks, I like to just go in a circular motion. Helps get those out of there. So again, we should not be able to see where you added that triangle. There should be no evidence of that piece. So from here, you're going to want to let your piece either set up just slightly so this gets a little bit more stiff, or you can take it to a heat gun or a hair dryer to suck some of the moisture out of here because we are going to end up, we're going to flip this over and we need this part of our form to be sturdy enough so it doesn't collapse on us. So you have two different options for drying out your tripod base. You can either use the heat gun, which is gonna get 
really, really hot. So if you're feeling a little bit insecure, um, I would probably go with less heat and use just a regular old hair dryer. And I really recommend this for beginners um, because that way you're not drying your um, clay out too fast, too quickly, because then you're gonna run into other problems. have is the cylinder shape to our vessel. So we know that we have the foot. This big part, the bulk of, we would, we would probably call this whole section, but we are about to make the body. So what we're going to do next is we're going to create the body to our vessel. And then eventually we'll come up here to neck to the neck and have that flare out and create the rim. So what we're trying to do is we're going to push this area of our vessel out. So in the end, we have this shape. So I've created these dotted lines because that's representing this area right here. And what we ultimately want to do is push this section out so it's going um, away from where the wall currently is. At this point, you have the foot of your tripod vase smoothed out, you have your wall made, your feet are sturdy, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create um, the belly of our pot, we're gonna push it out. Now you can do this several different ways. I am only gonna be using my rib to do this, but you could use different tools like your uh, wooden modeling tool, you could use a wooden spoon, you could use the handle of your felting knife. There's lots of things that you could use, but for me, I have found for beginner students that using the round part of the rib works the best. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this on its feet and I'm going to keep it on the turntable and I'm going to use the side of my rib. So I'm not going to be bending this really, but I do want to keep a good grip on it. And what's going to happen is I'm going to support the outside wall and I'm going to be pushing the clay into the palm of my hand. And the palm of my hand is going to help keep the shape rounded out. But I'm not doing this at the top. I'm doing this at the bottom, like three-fourths of the pot. So right above the tripod foot, uh, but not above the half wave point. So I'm going to put the camera angle on the side so you can see kind of where my hand is. But when I'm doing this, this is the motion. So I'm pushing the rib tool into my palm, pushing this clay wall out. It's a really gentle motion. You know, you're not being really aggressive. You're moving the clay just a little bit at a time. Okay, I'm gonna do the best I can to show you from this angle. So I'm gonna have my hand here. I'm gonna have my rib um, with the rounded side going towards the clay. So it looks like this again on the inside. So I'm pushing into my palm. I'm about below the halfway point. So I'm only going right above the tripod leg and staying below the halfway point. So I have my rib on the inside and I'm going to gently start to push that clay into my palm. And you should start to kind of feel your clay move slightly. Don't try to get this pushed out all the way to where you want it to end right off the bat. It's going to take several rotations of doing this. I'm just making sure that it's even pressure. I'm applying the same amount of pressure all the way around. Once I get back to where I've started, I'm going to take a look at the shape of my pot. And if I want it to come out a little bit further, I'm going to keep going. So you can see on this side, it's pushed out a little bit further than it is over here. So I'm going to kind of put my attention to this side of the pot and I'm going to push that clay out. I'm going to stop again and I'm going to take a look at it and make sure it's about even on all sides. And then I'm going to come up just a little bit higher and start pushing the clay up above where I was just at.
Once you get used to how much pressure you're applying, you can kind of let go of the clay and just you can see where your rib is on the surface of your pot. Again, stop, take a look, make sure that it's even all the way around. I still have a little bit more coming out on this side, so I'm going to go back to the opposite side and I'm going to continue to push that edge out or that side of the wall. You can look from the top too. You can kind of see. Don't go too far because what will happen is you'll start to, you'll, you could bust the seam where the slab came together. So be careful. You know, you can only push your clay so far. I'm gonna look at it from the top. It looks like I need to push it out just a little bit on the side. And then I think I'm gonna call it good. That looks pretty good to me. So now I'm going to work on the top of my form. So I have the, the, the foot, the body, and now we're gonna work on the neck area. Now that we have the body flaring out, what we wanna do is create the neck. We wanna to start to constrict the neck going inward. So like down here, we were pushing the wall out. Up here at the neck, we want to push the neck in. And the way that we're gonna do that is with our different, um, our scraper, our metal scraper, and with our rubber ribs. And we're going to start to angle so the neck is pushed in, and then eventually we'll angle the rim so it's flaring outward, and we'll create the lip for your lid to um, sit down in. So now I flipped my form over and I'm going to start working on the neck. This part is a little bit tricky. Um, you're going to switch to your scraper and I'm going to be pulling from the rim of the pot. I'm going to be slightly pushing in and then pulling out. So this is all about the pressure. Um, start gentle um, because if you push too hard right off the bat, then you're going to end up breaking your clay wall. But what's happened, my clay is a little bit um, dry, so I'm kind of scraping some clay off, but that's okay, I can smooth it back in here in a little bit. But I'm pushing, I'm starting at the bottom and I'm slightly pushing in and I'm pulling out. And I'm gonna continue doing that all the way around. And I'm stopping right at that spot where I push the clay out on the foot or I guess the belly part portion of the form. And what should start to happen is the neck of your form should start to kind of be created. But again, my clay is just a little bit more dry than yours probably is. So it's gonna take a little bit more effort um, on my part to get this to shape up a little bit. But what you want is the form to start to come in just slightly. Once you're happy with how far you have the body of your form coming in, we're ready to flip it over and do some smoothing. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my damp sponge and I'm gonna smooth out any kind of crumbs that I might have and get this looking really nice and kind of evened out. And it's gonna help compress the clay as well. I have my neck, it's 
starting to flare in just slightly, but I want it to flare in even more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rib tool and I'm going to start to kind of press my clay in while I'm pressing the top of the rim out with my thumb just slightly. So this isn't, you know, I'm not applying a whole lot of pressure. It's just very slight. And this is kind of up to you. It's gonna depend on what you want the body, the silhouette of your form to look like. Maybe you're happy with how far the neck is flaring at this point. But if not, you'll just continue to kind of use your rib tools to push that neck in as far as you would like it to go. Now keep in mind, you are going to create a lid, so you don't want it probably to be super, you know, shallow on the inside because you would like it to be a functioning vessel. But it is up to the artist to decide how far you want that neck to kind of flare in and how tight you want it. So continue working the clay until you're happy with your design and then you'll go ahead and you'll smooth it out and compress that clay and you'll be ready to start the lip so you can have your lid sit down onto your vessel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the side of my rib tool. I'm gonna put my hand on the inside. I'm gonna start near the bottom and I'm applying, you know, kind of a lot of pressure at the foot and then lightening it up as I get towards the top. And what's happening is it's kind of creating this constriction of the base and this flaring out of the rim section. And you're just gonna to wanna to use your discretion um, to keep going to, I guess, till you get the shape that you like, really. Um, but it's in, up at the top, when you get towards the top, it's a really light pressure, you know, so I'm going harder at the bottom and then I loosen up when I get to the top. It's lighter at the top. And um, it really, I always talk about sense of touch in here, and this is really kind of muscle memory and just getting used to how much pressure you need in certain areas of the form that it is that you're creating. The next step is to create the rim of our vessel so our lid has something to sit on. So we're gonna take a popsicle stick and we're gonna create the tool in a really simple way. The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna have your popsicle stick and your pencil. You're going to take your pencil and we're going to go them up about a half inch and then we're just going to go halfway up and then we're going to create like a rounded section right there where your two lines meet. And then we're going to take our X-Acto knife and we're going to score our pieces. You, don't, you probably won't be able to cut all the way through and if you do you're probably going to snap your popsicle stick. So just score the piece. Make sure your thumb is out of the way. And then this gets a little bit trickier because you don't have as much to grip. But just be careful. Make sure your fingers are out of the way as you're scoring. And if you can score all the way through, then that's fantastic. Try to get this part rounded. It's a little bit tricky. And if you can't get it exactly, we can go in with some sandpaper and we can do that. Um, and then, don't do what I just did because I kind of snapped my piece. Um, once you have it scored, then you can take your scissors and you can go ahead and cut it the rest of the way. There we go. And then if, um, we're gonna take some sandpaper and we're gonna sand this down just so it's a little bit nicer. And now you have your homemade tool. So now with your tool that you just made, you're gonna set it on the rim of your form and with your turntable, you're going to gently turn your vessel and you will see that it's creating a line for you. And if it quit doing that, then you're just needing to press probably just a little bit harder as you're, you're turning your pot and you, it, sometimes it helps to hold it at the top as you turn it. And you're going to keep doing this until you have kind of an established line on the inside, almost like a little shelf. 
we're just kind of carving away the clay on the inside of your rim. And if it's taking some clay off the top, that's okay, it's not a huge deal. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do this one more time. And then once I'm happy with it, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip my tool and I'm gonna use this edge. So we were using the area that's cut out. We're now gonna use this edge here and we're gonna to continue to scrape away the clay above the edge that you've just created. Because what I have right now is just not wide enough. If I create a clay lid, it's just gonna kind of fall off that ledge. So we want that to be wide enough that our, lidded, um, our lid for our vessel will actually sit down on there, acting as kind of a shelf. It's actually called a flange. That's what we're creating. And if you can't do it this way, what you could do is, if this is rounded here, you, could pro you might have to score it, but since you're not doing a shape, you can probably just cut it. Get that nice and straight. And you can go this way too. That might be a little bit easier. That way you're not hitting the top area of your vessel. Now you can also make a lip by adding a piece of slab or a coil to the inside. Uh, but I often find for beginners this is much easier. It's more consistent and it tends to look a little bit nicer. If you get an area that seems to be a little bit thinner, I would probably concentrate your energy there for a little bit. And that might be because when you were creating the neck of your pot, maybe one section got pushed in or pushed out further. Just make sure that this part of the popsicle stick is straight up and down, and that will help create a thicker flange for you. Don't worry about the crumbs that are kind of falling down into the inside of the pot. We'll clean that up later. Now I've got an edge that is wide enough that it's going to hold the rim of my lid. But I want to go ahead and get rid of all these crumbs and then I'm going to smooth this out with my sponge. So I went ahead and I cleaned up the inside and now I'm going to clean out this outside rim because I don't want it to sit at this 90 degree angle. I want it to be a little bit softer. I want it to be a little bit more round. So I'm taking my sponge I'm not gonna do that on the inside flange. I'm just gonna do it to this outside edge, like the top of the rim. So I dampened it with my sponge, smoothed it out with my fingertip, and now I'm gonna take just a little piece of my saran wrap. I'm gonna wrap it over the top, and I'm just gonna use that to kind of help me smooth this and round it out a little bit. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you kind of figure out how to use it, you can even kind of wrap it around your finger like this. I've seen people do that. I tend to kind of just keep it on the side over the edge and I just kind of pull it like this. But whatever works best for you. And I'm just rounding out that outside edge. And I like to round out the inside edge as well, but I feel like that kind of is an artistic quality. So you'll have to decide what you like. And there we go. Now we're ready to create the lid to our vessel. To create the lid, I've rolled out a slab and I'm going to take my 
tripod vessel and I'm going to put it on top of my slab and I'm going to cut around it and I'm going to leave probably about a half inch around the outside edge of my vessel because if you put it right up next to where the rim of your form is and you cut your uh, slab that same size then it's going to be too small so you've got to leave yourself um, some room so you can do this lots of different ways um, I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm just going to kind of turn my turntable keeping myself at about a half inch wide now if you want to make it exact, you could always use your ruler, measure it out, get yourself your half inch mark, so you know, I guess I probably, I went about three fourths, but I'd rather be, I can always cut it down, so I always make, make it a little larger than I need to, but I could go ahead and I could mark that all the way around, and then use that as a guide as well, if you want to. So that's another route if you want to make sure that it's exact that's an option um, and then once you have your shape if you've got a really nice um, turntable you can kind of whip this around and you can have your exacto knife sitting there and it will cut it um, really quickly for you but this is a little bit cheaper turntable so it doesn't have that luxury so i'm just going to take my exacto knife and i'm going to go through and i'm going to try to keep it on my lines that i made as close as I can and that's pretty good and then if you have a circle stencil you could lay it on top of that and you could go ahead and trace around it and get it really perfectly symmetrical all the way around but for my purposes this is going to work just fine so now that I have my slab for my lid now what I'm going to do is I want to turn this into a dome shape so I'm going to put this piece in kind of the palm of my hand, I'm gonna try to find the middle. Now you can use your turntable for this, but um, you would probably have to have your circle pretty centered, but you know, you could kind of, uh, just like you would on the pottery wheel, kind of have your hands guide you in. Um, I'm not gonna do that, cause I'm just gonna kind of guess, but, cause I know this isn't completely round and it would probably be pretty hard to get centered. So I'm just gonna find the middle and then I'm gonna press into my palm, like so. And I'm just gonna kind of gently push that clay now push the clay into this kind of concaved shape creating this dome in a really slow kind of motion and i've had students say well can i just make a pinch pot you could you could turn you could make your um, lid out of a pinch pot but this is a slab vessel so that's why we're going to stick with the slab technique. Now, if you have a mold that you could use, which we happen to have in this class, then once you get your slab kind of coming into this rounded motion, then we're going to set this on top of the mold to help us finish shaping that. Be careful that you're not thinning your clay slab unevenly. You're trying to keep it the same thickness all the way around as you start to kind of make this into a dome shape. Once you have your slab kind of started into the dome shape, then you're going to pick which side which size mold you're going to use and remember um, that these go down in size and you can obviously go in between but we don't have that actual mold but technically you could so ours go from a fourth half pound you know in regards to i guess weight um to a half pound in regard these are pinch pots but we use them for multiple things so i'm going to set my slab on top of the biggest mold and i'm going to gently and I do mean gently start to kind of compress the slab around the shape. Now I know my lid is going to be too big and I did that intentionally because I want to show you guys something. So once you have it so it's drooped all the way around the mold, like so, then you're going to very gently pop this off, 
and set your piece off to the side. If your clay is really, really soft, then you might want to put some paper towel in there if you're getting ready to maybe um, take a break. If not, then continue and we'll go on to the next step. So even though I know that my um, pinch pot is probably a little bit taller than I would like it, I know that it's also too wide for the vessel form. So if I were to try to sit this down into the pot on the rim, it's not gonna work. It's gonna go right over the top. So I need to push in the sides of my lid a little bit further. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my popsicle stick and I'm gonna support the opposite wall and I'm going to gently start to push the bottom edge of my domed lid inward. Now this is a gradual process. You're not going to be able to get this all the way in to fit your vessel all in one rotation. You're going to have to do this multiple times. But what I wanted to show you was um, if you is, sorry my grammar is terrible right then, um, if you didn't want your lid to be quite this tall, you could always trim this down. Like you could always take your um, X-Acto knife and we could measure up and we could go ahead and trim this. Um, but again, you wanna be careful that you don't make it too small. Um, I usually tell students to wait until they have this edge, the correct size, and it actually fits their vessel um, to see because they might, you might end up liking how tall it is. So I'm gonna continue this process. I'm gonna check it with the rim of my form every now and again. And I'll keep doing this until it fits. because if your clay has any stickiness to it, then it's gonna end up sticking, your two pieces will stick together. So this is just gonna create a nice barrier so you don't have that happen. And while you're working on your lid, you can always use this to help take it out of the vessel so you're not, once you put your handle on here, you're not always messing with it. So the last step that I'm gonna do before I go to my decoration portion and the designing portion of the outside surface is I need to go ahead and compress the lid because we've got several cracks happening and we want to fix that up. So that's what I'm going to do now and I'm just going to use that rib and my sponge to go ahead and make that happen. then you have your form created. You've made the body, you made the neck, you got your feet still on there, you created your lid, and now we're gonna set this off to the side to kind of set up a little bit, but make sure that you have it under plastic till it's all the way finished, or else it'll get too dry and you won't be able to do anything else with it. So now we're gonna turn our attention to surface decoration. Hopefully you kind of have a vision of what you want your vessel to already look like. So do you want to focus on texture? Do you want to do the subtractive process, the additive process? Do you want to do a bunch of attachments to enhance the form's design? Those are all things that you have to decide as the artist. Whatever you choose, make sure that you take the time and you kind of evaluate your pot and you pick kind of something that's going to accentuate the elements that you already have in your art form. 
don't rush through this step because you've already spent a lot of time building your form and you don't want to mess it up. I know whatever you choose, you're going to do a great job and these pieces are just going to look absolutely amazing and incredibly dynamic.